Start. Just a second. Okay. Uh, okay. Hello, my name is Sergey Golvov. I'm a Java developer in data art. Uh, and today I will do a short overview of Google Compute Engine and then pre uh, present you the showcase of using uh, App Engine standard environment as a platform for microservices uh, with use of Java runtime on this standard environment. Uh, but before I will start about Google Compute Engine, uh, like a few words about uh, the conference that uh, actually inspired uh, me and Evgen to prepare this uh, presentation. Uh, first is a proof photo, so I actually was there. <laughs> okay, and uh, so first, uh, so there was uh, different streams on that conference. So basically, Google presenting their uh, innovations, uh, some new products, uh, new approaches, uh, and uh, like uh, one of them was this uh, PWA, uh, the progressive web apps. So there were a bunch of uh, mm, uh, presentation on this topic. Another topic, uh, topic was uh, Android and uh, Android things. So again, we'll do like a, uh, some review also of this uh, of this stream. And um, like Android things is a, a new uh, IoT platform uh, by Google. Although there was uh, like many topics on that, uh, uh, many presentation on the topic. Another uh, stream is TensorFlow and machine learning. Also, there was a few presentations on artificial intelligence uh, uh, researches, which are uh, made by Google, and a uh, huge stream on Google Cloud uh, Plus and Firebase. Some general topics were, were covered, uh, and uh, there was a few keynotes. Uh, at the beginning of every day, we, we had a keynotes where when they do. Uh, uh, like some presentation, some uh, announcements. Uh, for example, there was an announcement uh, on uh, of uh, new Google Assistant uh, features, and uh, so there's those keynotes was like more were more like uh, and also like performance. It's not like usual presentation, so uh, and it was uh, really inter entertaining to watch uh, those keynotes. Also, there was. Uh, Meetups for different communities, uh, trainings, QA panels. You were able to ask a question of uh, a question Googlers on some specific topics. Uh, like, like both days, there was also a design lab when, where uh, you can get a review for your design uh, of your application or your um, uh, service. And uh, on the third day, there was a training on Google called Basics. Uh, but uh, like, every, like all the materials are available on Code Labs, you can do this uh, on your own. Uh, and also, there was a great out party, <laughs> of course. Okay, and uh, back to like the mm, to the main main topic. So let's uh, like determine uh, some like terminology for um, for this presentation. So uh, I really like this analogy of pizza as a service for explaining this, uh, those terms uh, like uh, infrastructure as a service and the platform as a service. So as you see, uh, like the left column corresponds uh, like for action when you are like, doing your pizza yeah, on your own at home. So you should have all the ingredients uh, and you should prepare it for, by yourself. The next step is when you are buying uh, some ready to and bake pizza in some supermarket. So you should just to bake it, yes, and, uh, uh, and that's it. And uh, also you can like, uh, 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 ask for some delivery, and in this case, you, you still have something to do, yes, to clear for yourself. And the uh, next option is to just to eat, in some, eat pizza in some restaurant. So uh, this really corresponds to like stages of cloud computing that actually 
uh, that we can use. And uh, so the f first life column corresponds to uh, those uh, days when we had, uh, like when we worked on the bare metal, uh, on uh, servers that uh, uh, that were deployed on some uh, data centers, or it can be you sometimes you can even physically have some server in your room. Uh, so they are super flexible. You can do whatever you want on this server. Uh, it can hold sensitive data, of course, because y you are uh, like responsible for this server. Uh, but there are drawbacks because uh, uh, like there are high operation costs on having those servers. You should have uh, uh, specialists that are uh, aware how to handle issues with the server, and you have almost no scaling. You can install a new server, but uh, like again, it's another operation cost. So then uh, the next step is uh, infrastructure as a service. So in this, uh, sorry, in this case, uh, we can delegate the part of our operations to the public cloud. And in this case, we have almost the same flexibility because we have like, uh, like, like there are different uh, operation systems that we can have on our virtual machine in, uh, in the cloud. Uh, but plus we have scalability and um, uh, less uh, like operation efforts. Um, but of course, you uh, your like a service or uh, application can be can have some special regulation, sensitive data, which can prevent you f from holding your data on public clouds. Uh, this is um, this an issue of, uh, of cloud. Uh, and the next step is uh, like a platform as a service. Uh, so you have all uh, drawbacks and uh, like and uh, pluses of uh, infrastructure as a service, but uh, at the same time, uh, like uh, you have, uh, so you have some platform which uh, you, you absolutely have no idea where uh, your code is executing. So you are just writing your code. Uh, and then deploy it, and then it works. So you have no idea what is like, which machine is uh, behind this code, and uh, you have almost no uh, like ability to to like to find this information. Um, but uh, uh, like the most, like the minus of this it could be that uh, that means that you are depend on some proprietary lifecycle or proprietary. Um, like solutions, uh, some proprietary software, uh, and the next step of this uh, of the cloud computing if when uh, the software is delivered uh, as a service, yes. So uh, and uh, so, an examples of this is uh, uh, like both Amazon, uh, Windows, and uh, Google has their own uh, like uh, corresponding uh, services. So uh, as you see, it's uh, Amazon uh, Azure Compute, uh, like as an example of platform is a Google App Engine or Elastic Beanstalk. And the software is uh, Google Apps or Microsoft Office, which we can uh, use uh, in the cloud. Uh, so this few words about uh, latest trends. Uh, so uh, like software, like uh, moving to the cloud and the same Space as uh, like uh, infrastructure, <laughs> so we see that uh, like this trend is like like pretty. It shows that uh, this is uh, like cloud public cloud is in high demand, high demand right now. But we see also like the huge difference in dynamics between uh, infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, which uh, means that uh, like uh, uh, companies are. Uh, not want to stack with some proprietary solutions, which uh, are usually using with uh, like uh, with platform as a service. Like another slide that shows this um, trend is the uh, future of workloads. So um, we see that uh, like at the same uh, now we have around 16 percent of uh, uh, software running on uh, in data centers. Uh, but uh, 
in a year it will change by 15 percent and uh, like uh, the most part of those uh, users who will leave data centers will move to the public cloud so this is uh, uh, like, uh, current state of uh, workloads and uh, and uh, the last slide about market is uh, that we see that uh, almost half of the market was occupied by Amazon and uh, so uh, Microsoft and Google has like a uh, um, significantly uh, smaller parts of this market and uh, with 10% uh, uh, by Microsoft and 4% uh, by Google and uh, so I today I will present you the Google cloud platform so probably it can be interesting for you because uh, like as you see the numbers are uh, like, uh, like they are <laughs> okay so uh, so this is a cloud Google cloud platform product that's uh, like not all, all of them they have uh, much more services available uh, but uh, uh, basically, their services can be grouped uh, by these, those four groups. So you have a compute group, storage group, big data group, and machine learning. So basically, these are uh, machine learning. These are the tools to do uh, like machine learning ap applications. Uh, big data are tools to process some big amount of data. Uh, storage is a uh, like group for storing your data. You have uh, like a cloud data store, like a NoSQL storage, cloud SQL as a um, like a, this, uh, SQL uh, database. Cloud storage is a is a uh, kind of a file storage similar as uh, Amazon S3 and a uh, big table. And the compute is a uh, like uh, compute is a, a group of products to run your software on, on the cloud. Um, okay, so uh, so what are the reasons uh, to choose Google Cloud platform over the other platforms? Uh, the reason could be like uh, this: they have a per second billing, so you are paying just uh, like for seconds your uh, instances are running. Uh, so with uh, com like with combination of smart recommendations that they have and uh, some automatic discounts, it can gives you more uh, like around like on average like 60% less price uh, for uh, your cloud infrastructure. So that's significant change. And uh, another reason is uh, many products are free up to specified usage limits, and uh, this like this free tier is. Uh, also standard thing for Azure and for uh, Amazon, but here in Google Cloud Platform, you are also available to use uh, even some APIs, um, like Google APIs, and you can even have some micro uh, virtual machine. It's just small, but it's uh, pretty fine to uh, you know to to start to and uh, to try a cloud platform. Uh, also, there is a free trial to 12 months with a 300 USD credit, uh, which is more than enough to try any service on Google Cloud Platform. Um, and uh, another reason could be that you or your service will rely on, on some unique Google APIs and some unique services provided by Google. So like speech, Google uh, uh, image recognition, and uh, translate, or whatever. And the last reason it could be like because it's Google. <laughs> Maybe you like it so much. Uh, okay, it's now more. Let's concentrate on Google Cloud Compute. So as I mentioned, is a place where uh, you can run your software. And uh, um, on the top, uh, there are almost no operation efforts here you see so basically that means that you are deploying just your code and uh, uh, almost no uh, like operation uh, like involved and uh, on the bottom you have uh, like more flexibility and uh, so uh, uh, so at the bottom we have a compute engine 
which uh, is just uh, providing you with uh, scalable virtual machines. Uh, there are like variety of con configuration. You can have a micro instance. You have uh, like pretty large instance. Like you could have even 96 CPUs and 624 giga of uh, RAM, which is uh, like a large amount of RAM. <laughs> Uh, and you have a predefined uh, like amount of uh, different uh, operation system which you can uh, start your um, like VM, and uh, so you will ju you just choose your uh, configuration, press the button, and uh, you have a virtual machine. Um, like another option is a container engine, so. Uh, Kubernetes is a product which was created by Google, and obviously they have uh, infrastructure for running uh, Kubernetes clusters, and uh, this is actually uh, the, where you can do this. And uh, the one big plus is that there is no like some vendor lock-in. You can uh, go whatever you want on any other service with the same configuration, so you should not be afraid of uh, stuck with Google uh, if for some reason, you will find some better place to run your uh, clusters. And uh, uh, also, there is a, uh, the, the upper one was the Cloud Functions, which is a, a Node.js environment uh, where you just deploy your uh, like functions, which will be like, executed. And you will, play, or you will pay only for um, like, uh, amount of, of your function was executed. So uh, it is uh, like uh, the upper level of the evolution of serverless computing. So you just deploying your function, and that's, that's it. You and you should not uh, worry about some configuration on scalability or etc. Uh, and let's uh, talk about App Engine. So App Engine could be divided. Uh, a App Engine is divided between uh, standard environment and flexible environment. Uh, so uh, the, the flexible my environment here, uh, you should choose it over standard only uh, if you need uh, like operation system packages uh, or you, your application depends on some frameworks that include native code. So basically it gives you some flexibility uh, of uh, so of, uh, like deploying your application to uh, some VM. Uh, and uh, so as, as it's stated here, so your application run within Docker containers, but they should be configured in a special manner. And uh, so and you will uh, have, in this case, uh, like full support of uh, App Engine. So it's uh, some hybrid solution for uh, like for App Engine and and, and uh, Docker, so and you can get uh, could pick a standard environment, and in this case, uh, so your application run in a sandbox with some specific uh, like runtime of supported language. As you see, uh, currently there are uh, four languages supported: Python, uh, Java, PHP, and Go. Uh, uh, you have powerful SDK uh, that you can use in standard environment. Uh, so the, in this SDK, all the APIs of uh, App Engine and Google uh, are available. You have local dev environment. So that means that you can start your uh, application locally. And you have deployment tools also. And uh, this is basically what we need most of the time for our applications. Uh, and let's now focus on standard environment. Uh, and out of the box, we have a persistent storage with uh, query sorting uh, transactions, both NoSQL and SQL. Uh, we have uh, automatic scaling and load and balancing. Uh, we can have, uh, we can make our services uh, um, uh, uh, communicate asynchronously in a synchronous manner with use of task queues and uh, we can schedule our task uh, in uh, you know, like uh, like we do are usually with Chrome uh, in App Engine, 
and we have integration with other Google Cloud services and APIs. And uh, more specifically on Java runtimes, because this, I'm a Java developer, and uh, this is the runtime which I'm working with uh, on a daily basis. Uh, so uh, two weeks ago, uh, Google uh, made an announcement that uh, now we have a Java 8 runtime, which is uh, uh, which became uh, uh, general available. Uh, it means that it's no more in uh, beta status, and that's cool. And because uh, before that, uh, the only option for uh, Java on uh, Google on Open Engine was uh, Java 7 environment. Uh, there was a uh, it was a really restrictive environment. There was a like a pack of whitelisted class that you can use. Uh, there was a no. Uh, there was a, it, it was a container with a server 2.5 uh, specification, and uh, which made it uh, like, like I think that nobody will start a new service with, uh, uh, with such mm, like stack of technology. But now we, uh, you can uh, consider a engine uh, if you are working with Java as a uh, as an environment for your next application because uh, almost every um, a framework will be supported uh, with such uh, such technology stack. Uh, okay, so enough talk. <laughs> let's code. Uh, just let me show you. Okay. Okay, great. So let me show you. So I, uh, preparing for this presentation, I uh, thought about uh, which example to pick uh, to show you like the abilities of uh, Google uh, Cloud, of Google uh, standard environment, a pension standard environment, and uh, so I found this uh, like AP this API. Uh, this is a free API which provides uh, rates for different currencies. There is a free variant of this API, and this is uh, in this uh, variant it provides only uh, rates for USD currency. So basically, uh, my application will will just uh, convert your uh, specified currency, so you can find how much you should pay in some specific currency to pay a uh, specified amount of dollars. So, for example, uh, how much we should pay to buy uh, hundred dollars. So here's today's uh, this number. You see this. There are uh, like only three properties of this uh, currency, like rate, currency, code, and the upload time. Uh, this basically is this very basic application, uh, and uh, so when we started our new project in App Engine, uh, in Google Cloud, first what we should have is of course uh, uh, the project. So we should create a project. So when we created our project, we can start uh, coding. We should have. Uh, we should install uh, the Google Cloud uh, SDK. On, on it is available for every operation system, so uh, it's uh, really easy. And uh, now we can start uh, like coding. So uh, okay, to show your uh, so I decided that uh, so few words about the architecture of this application. So we have a, we will have some backend instances that will do some uh, backend uh, processing of, uh, of uh, our of this API that I show you. Uh, basically, it will just uh, query the API and then store it in the new NoSQL database in the Google Data Store. Uh, and then uh, the front end application is the application that will um, that will uh, like work with uh, user requests. 
So that's, uh, that's the division of uh, my services here. Also, we have a common module for that will be used from both applications. Here we have just uh, uh, some. Uh, okay. Uh, which here we have just uh, uh, some model, which is a currency with all those uh, fields that I showed you on UI, and some DAO to that access object. Uh, uh, so as you see, it wor work with uh, uh, Google Cloud, uh, uh, like with uh, uh, Google Cloud API is very easy because uh, when you are getting uh, like instance, for example, of this data storage service. Uh, you should now uh, not provide any uh, authorization information, so this service will be already authorized, and you can use it freely without any problem. Uh, so backend is configured with. Uh, so here we have a, it's a Spring Boot application, but uh, we are packaging it with the var because we will then deploy it to the uh, pension, uh, which is backed by JT9. Uh, uh, short that container, so we should uh, exclude this dependency to Tomcat from Spring Boot. Uh, we should have an SDK, of course, a Pension SDK, and few other options. Uh, like uh, also, we should have uh, um, uh, a Pension plugin, and, uh, and basically that's it. Uh, so here in our backend application, we have. Uh, we have an endpoint, uh, only one endpoint uh, with name update currencies, uh, which will update for us uh, the currency uh, just by delegating this call to the service. And here we are parsing our uh, API, then we mapping to the, our domain object, and then storing to the uh, Google Data Store. Um, so, and that's it. Uh, as you see, it's marked with uh, synchronous uh, annotation. Uh, and uh, there is a reason mm, like why I've done this. Um, so we want to have our, uh, like this task to be performed in background. Uh, and we need, uh, so we should uh, have, like, uh, we should uh, have, uh, like, uh, we should create another uh, thread for it, for this, uh, for this task to be done. And uh, uh, there is a very important thing in, uh, uh, so there is a division in App Engine between instances. You can have auto scaled instance, uh, you can have a basic scaled instance, or you can have manual scale instance. And, uh, to be able to create background threads, you should pick uh, a manual scaling instance or a basic scaling, because otherwise you will be able to create only the threads for the current request. That means that uh, if you will create uh, this like, new thread for the current request and the request is done, then it means that your uh, like this new thread that was created will be interrupted. That uh, of course uh, is not suitable for uh, like any background uh, processing. So, uh, so here this specific instance. Uh, so here I am defining this uh, background thread factory, and uh, uh, and also I specify mm, this uh, like this specific instance, the specific applications to be. Uh, configured with the basic scaling. I'm, he I'm telling here that uh, like I want to have only one instance of this uh, service, and uh, the idle tim timeout for an instance is two minutes. That means that it will be shut down after two minutes of no uh, like interaction with this service. And uh, of course, we want uh, our service to be secured. And uh, in case of uh, like background processing. We can do this uh, even just by specifying this simple intercept that will check in this uh, request header, uh, like uh, with uh, like e XAP Engine cron. And uh, if we will have if we have this uh, header in request, we could be sure that uh, this is request from App Engine cron because uh, this request will be 
this uh, header uh, will be stripped from uh, outside requests. So there is no way to provide it uh, to the service otherwise than from uh, like a pension cron. And uh, so uh, our endpoint will be called by this cron, and this is a specification, uh, this is a configuration for this cron. So as you see, I specify just use the URL, um, some description and schedule like to run it every 24 hours and the uh, target uh, like backend like we're, because our sa service called backend because that's, that's is about uh, uh, about backend uh, and few words about front end it's even simpler it's also Spring Boot application and also there is only one controller here which simply delegates the call to the uh, data store DAO, uh, and we have uh, like uh, mm, we have also uh, UI, yes, which is just simple index.html uh, page and some JavaScript. Uh, so let me update the version, and we will uh, deploy it with this uh, new version. And as I mentioned, I uh, the, like you should pick uh, like any uh, scaling option that you need for your App Engine environment. And in this case, I didn't specify it. And uh, if you don't specify it, uh, App Engine will uh, run it uh, with auto scaling option. Uh, so that's what I need, and that's why I didn't specify it here. Here, uh, scaling option. Okay, so let's deploy this application. Uh, like uh, um, Google created a really cool uh, toolkit for IntelliJ IDEA, and uh, we can deploy this application even uh, from our uh, even from IntelliJ IDEA just uh, by pressing this uh, like uh, configuring deployment and uh, doing this. But we also able to. Uh, deploy our application from uh, like with our Maven plugin, which uh, is worked, uh, uh, which is configured uh, on uh, Google App Engine, uh, Google Cloud SDK. So let's do this uh, with Maven plugin. Okay. Okay, and now we started this uh, deploy, and uh, while it runs, I will show you the App Engine console. Uh, so here is a uh, this is a Google Cloud Platform console. So you uh, so you basically you can use not only App Engine in your Google Cloud Platform, but you can use like bunch of tools. For example, you can process your data with big data tools and then providing some front end for it on app engine uh, and in this case you will you can uh, customize uh, like whatever you, uh, you can put here whatever you want uh, it's like there are a lot of different uh, uh, like options to put here not only app engine and as you see there is uh, like a lot of products here uh, so let's go to App Engine dashboard. Okay, here is uh, our App Engine dashboard. So here is uh, like a specific uh, specific uh, reports uh, uh, on uh, App Engine performance, on uh, some billing status, on uh, current load, and never reporting. So um, that's it. Um, uh, here is our services. So here there is a um, backend service, and uh, there is a default service which is correspond to our front end service. Uh, I just uh, I didn't specify the ID because at least one service should be deployed uh, without any um, like service ID, and it will be considered as de a default service for App Engine. Uh, so we see here that there is a um, like free versions of uh, my front-end uh, application here. And what I think that is uh, a killer feature for me for with in, in App Engine is this uh, like version management because it's uh, you can have uh, 
uh, like all RH for your versions deployed on the engines, and you can switch from version to version just in a, mo in a matter of seconds. And basically, you you are shouldn't be afraid of deploying uh, your application on uh, any environment, not only like some SAT or never mind. So you can deploy production, and then in a matter of seconds. Uh, so now we have uh, redeployed uh, version three of this application, uh, and uh, so you can in a matter of seconds you can uh, switch back to the previous version and. Uh, uh, another cool feature here that you can use uh, uh, traffic splitting. So you can split your traffic between versions, and it's a cool feature when you want to uh, like deploy it. Uh, when you are not 100% like sure that this service is uh, like, uh, suitable for uh, the, the full workload, and you want, want first to try it, to test it. Uh, so you can uh, split the traffic between different versions. And this is cool. Oh, as you see, there is a version three of of the application, so it was like really fast and uh, uh, and like no problem to do this. Okay, let's. Uh, I I, I mm, show you the cron jobs, and I specified that uh, we should should run every 24 hours, but uh, we are not. Uh, we can run it with this magic button. Uh, whenever we want, so uh, we shouldn't wait until uh, like 24 hours and, uh, to rebuild this uh, our uh, like uh, uh, currencies currencies rate. So I'm doing this right now, uh, and uh, okay, it's still running. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, this feature of uh, like version management is a really cool uh, thing. And for example, let me also, for example, we can split as 50-50 those uh, versions. So um, okay, we can specify, for example, 50 to, uh, we can split by some IP address or by cookie. So in order to show you uh, like how does how it works i will uh, specify the cookie because uh, i'm not able to change my ip address <laughs> so fast so uh, okay so it's uh, stated that it's already splitted and we can uh, we can check if it will if this wall works for, for me okay my service is set. Okay, as you see, it's a version two, so it works. So this is a pretty cool feature. Um, okay, what's about our data store? Okay, as, uh, as you see, the uh, currency was reloaded, and uh, we can see here yes, that uh, the time was changed. So there is a, it's a UTC time, so there is a, some split between our time and UTC time. Okay, and uh, other features, so you can have, uh, you can see, see, uh, you can see some logs uh, of your application. Uh, you can hold uh, even your, uh, so y you can have hold here on Google Cloud Platform the even sources of your application and use it as a repository. So here are the logs, so they are searchable. Uh, you can create some metric to monitor those logs. You can uh, export them, and uh, they are pretty uh, convenient tool to use. And as I mentioned, you can store your source code here, and uh, uh, or you can mirror it from uh, uh, GitHub, like I, I did it. And the other cool feature here in uh, App Engine is a uh, possibility to debug your uh, to do a cloud debugging of your application. That means that you should not, uh, so there will be no uh, interruption of the user um, experience. So uh, you just, um, you are not able to step in or step out with your breakpoint, but you are able to uh, have some uh, snapshot of data of this current breakpoint. And uh, 
Uh, you can do this even on production environment, and uh, this is uh, the feature that uh, like will save you a lot of time. Yes, of uh, like uh, because sometimes you are uh, to reproduce the issue, you are spending like a whole day. Then you are f the fix of the issue is just like a few like few minutes. So uh, so that's uh, that's a cool feature. So let's uh, uh, like stop on this breakpoint and see whatever what we have. Uh, you can do this logging, uh, you can do this debugging uh, from the Google Cloud Console, but um, of course it's not uh, like the best tool to do this. You can do this uh, also in IntelliJ IDEA. Um, and uh, also, I want to mention that uh, every, si every single tool that I show you are available not only for um, uh, for Java, yes, runtime. It's also available e for uh, Python, for a Go. So, uh, okay. So, project ID. We have a, the project. Okay, Interquanta, and uh, Tagjet. We have. We want to debug. Also, for example, backend, yes, and um, as you see, there are uh, also all the snapshots that are uh, uh, I uh, like I made uh, from the Google console. They uh, loaded here to uh, to the IntelliJ IDEA. So there, there is a uh, they're available both from Google console and from um, until the idea. Uh, so let's wo see what we have. So we have some, yeah, some timestamp API. So you see, we basically we can uh, we can do a snapshot of some specific. Uh, uh, we can have a sp snapshot, and we are not stopping our environment. So and that's this is a cool feature. Okay, um, uh, this is uh, basically I covered all feature. That I wanted to show you here in uh, AppEngine, but uh, there are a lot more other services and feature, and um, like some, for example, Stack, Stack Driver can support your application with some uh, error reporting, some log monitoring, tracing, etc. So you should be, so you can use it for to prevent some uh, states of your application. Uh, so there are bunch of other products uh, so mm, as I mentioned so big data machine learning so uh, Google Cloud platform is uh, so you you basically have here everything uh, you need for like a modern business application and uh, mm, so let's so let's summarize um, like a bit uh, what I showed to you. Just a second. Okay, so the pluses here are uh, the convenience, almost no DevOps efforts. So, uh, so you are, as you you seen, you are just deploying your code. You are not uh, like aware of where it runs, and uh, uh, you are just like you are. Completely focused on your software. Uh, there are so huge, uh, like pretty impressive, this uh, like free quotes uh, that you can use. Uh, um, so there is uh, not only um, like this um, credit that you are given, like three hundred dollars, but there is also this free quotes that, uh, uh, for example, I didn't uh match those quotes with my simple application but as you see i tr i already tried and uh, so uh, it's it's enough to to play with this app engine so you should not be afraid <laughs> of uh, of money that you was you lose some money on uh, like was playing with it so it's fast and scalable and uh, also a, it's a core google infrastructure so I was worried as Java developer uh, because there was uh, like a, a month ago there was only support for uh, Java 7 and uh, server to five container. So I thought uh, maybe they will decommit this um, tool soon. So I 
took the opportunity and asked this question uh, with uh, Googlers on the conference. And he answered that it's, uh, it's just impossible because so many like internal tools are uh, working on this on App Engine that uh, it can be that he just uh, completely sure that it doesn't happen. So it's core Google, Google infrastructure. It's reliable. So you can use it, and uh, you should not be afraid that it will be decommissioned. And the mean minus, and it's uh, that I already mentioned, it's uh, there are a lot of proprietary things that uh, you should learn to do, uh, like the application on uh, the app engine. But uh, they are uh, not as like super. Uh, like this list is not uh, super big, but still, uh, it's not as easy. Uh, for you to like to move to some other solution if your application already run on uh, your app engine so you're most probably stuck with app engine if you choose it <laughs> so uh, because it it uh, requires a lot of uh, like re refactoring to move to some other um, service uh, that's it thank you for your attention so and now it's time for questions Guys, questions? So okay, so okay. And just please wait for microphone. Okay. If I understood correctly, you paid nothing to uh, deploy this uh, simple yes, application, yeah, it's, right? Uh, I can even show you. There is um, absolutely no. Uh, there is a quote uh, um, page on the dashboard. And uh, you can um, uh, just let me show you. Um, and uh, so I didn't hit the quote at all with my uh, with my simple application. As you see, there is a this is reason that I used like uh, one point seventy nine uh, instance hours, and uh, we have uh, there is a. Um, there is a page on the Google Cloud uh, when where all these uh, quotes are uh, like described more deeply. Uh, but for example, for App Engine applications, is uh, 24 instance hours per day. So, so as you see, I almost so it's just uh, impossible for this simple application to hit this uh, unless you like all of you will just start to use it. I don't know, but. Uh, it's almost impossible to hit those code with just you know with just playing with this environment. So you should be like, uh, and as I mentioned, you even can have some uh, free uh, like it, like micro instance virtual machine there, so for free. So uh, that's like other questions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, thanks.
Hello, uh, my name is Geni. I'm working in Data Art for a couple of years and working with Java and Android for more than five years. Uh, and I uh, also was on uh, GDD Europe, sorry, uh, with Sergey. And I want to share a, a couple of things that I saw there and uh, take a sneak peek of uh, Android Studio and architecture components. Firstly, I want to tell you some things that were on the GDD conference that were quite interesting, and if you want, you can ask me about them after the slides. First of all, it's Android Synths. It's, um, previously it was called Brilla. It's uh, Android-based uh, embedded operation systems for embedded Synths. Uh, if you want to build something like uh, Internet of Things or on your own, uh, like smart home or something like that, you can use uh, this um, toolkit it's based uh, on android studio so you can run this thing on android studio and uh, build something interesting uh, next one is a new uh, architecture components library from google i will tell you a little bit more about it later uh, uh, one more thing interesting that was shown also it's tensorflow mobile so if you want to uh, it's um, uh, image uh, recognition. If you want to add some image recognition on some uh, machine learning to your mobile device, you can do this as well. It's uh, it was previously for not for uh, for like for Java, uh, Python, and Go, as I remember. And uh, now it's coming to mobile on for Android and iOS. Uh, actually, it was new. Some uh, it was shown some new assistant Android assistant features. So now uh, Android assistant can understand uh, all that you're saying, um, and so as it was you were previously saying. So it can cap capture the context of uh, your phrases, and actually it can remember if you're saying, so for example, I I uh, I prefer. Uh, to swim in some temperature or something like that. I prefer this music band or uh, some interesting information. It can remember and uh, recall it for you later. Uh, and the new Android Studio. Uh, the new Android Studio 3.0 was uh, released today. <laughs> it's a little bit lucky. Uh, what's new in the new Android Studio? Uh, first of all, it's fully integ integrated Kotlin support, so you can use Kotlin uh, without some additional plugins, as it was in Android Studio 2.0. It's uh, Java 8 support. If you uh, want to use Java and uh, you want to use some lambdas or new features of Java 8, you can use it in your Android Studio. It's uh, instance applica instant application support that were introduced in uh, Android Oreo. Uh, it's slightly faster Gradle plugin, so it builds uh, uh, projects with uh, multi models. For example, it's in my case, it was building twice as fast. Yes. Uh, and the new Android Profiler. Let's talk a little bit more about it. The new Android Profiler works uh, great from Android Oreo, but if you're running Android Nougat and some below versions, uh, you have to enable profiling, advanced profiling in the settings. And uh, if you want to do some memory allocations, uh, like CPU tracing, you need to record it first. Uh, what's uh, new is uh, the, the whole look is similar to previous one, but what is new is uh, this bar with user events with uh, state of activities. On the top you can see that uh, state of activities has changed and you can uh, look, um, compare it to your statistics of CPU and memory. And with these uh, dots, you can see if the device were rotated or you got some user inputs from the user, from some touches. Uh, I will show you the slide a little bit closer because it's hard to see everything. On CPU profiler, we, get, uh, we have uh, all uh, our threads. So you can see what thread is running right now, what thread is sleeping, and uh, What's more interesting, you can see the list of uh, all the methods that were called, all the uh, classes, and uh, it's divided by uh, three colors. The, so the green one is uh, your application methods, the yellow one is Android framework methods, and the blue ones are the third-party apps. 
Lightroom. So let's now let's move to the memory profiler, and I will zoom this as well because it's hard to see. Uh, so um, as in old versions, you can see the the memory graph with uh, with new things such as uh, user input and activity state. But what's more interesting, you can uh, get the whole information about uh, you can. Um, you can uh, record a heat dump, or just uh, if you're using Android Oreo, uh, you can just select the um, the piece of of the time, like here, and you can get all the uh, of all the classes that were used, and with all the locations of these classes, all instances uh, that are uh, were used uh, in this period of time. And what's more interesting is that uh, you can see all the references to these uh, instances. For, for example, if uh, some object is holding your activity, you can check it right here. It's quite handful. Uh, and the last one thing, it's a uh, uh, network page of the Android profile. What's new here, uh, we can uh, get the um, uh, network request information. For example, if our method calls uh, some uh, network requ uh, request, we can get uh, all these um, requests uh, with, uh, as you can see, for example, if it's an image, it will even show you the image, all the URLs. And uh, for now, it supports only HTTP URL connection and OK, OK HTTP client. So if you're using something like uh, this uh, providers or for example, retrofit that uses OKHTTP, OK you can you can use this feature. Uh, so let's move now to architecture components. It's uh, a new, new Android uh, uh, pack of Android libraries that connected to architecture, and uh, right now they're in a release candidate state, and the page is even in alpha state. Um, so. You can use them l a little bit later. Uh, let's start with the lifecycle. So lifecycle is a uh, well-known, uh, well-known thing in Android uh, from the, from a long time. But now we can have the, uh, we, c we have the distinct interface, uh, which is um, uh, can can show us the can sh uh, can show us the states and the events connected to Android, uh, for example, uh, activity or fragment. Uh, right now, all the news, uh, all new upcompat activity and fragments from uh, support library and uh, so on supported this lifecycle, and you can use it. Uh, it's uh, quite handful. Uh, if, for example, if you want to check if the activity is still running or the, the fragment is uh, still showing, whether you're getting some feedback from the um, uh, from the network, for example, uh, to check uh, if our activity or any kind of object is um, you know, uh, sending um, uh, to us some uh, changes of the state, we can create uh, observer class. We just uh, implement lifecycle observer and annotate the methods with the name of the event that we want to check. Uh, Let's move on to the live data. What's live data? Live data is a lifecycle aware component. Uh, so it's know when the activity is created, when it's shown, when it's not shown. And uh, it's uh, basically a data holder for data holder for, for example, a user class. And uh, if we are uh, showing the acti if sh uh, changing something in this live data, uh, our user class it will sh automatically change in in the UI, but if uh, if the activity is on past or on destroyed, for example, the events are not transferred. But after the activity is recreated, we can subscribe. We, it subscribes again, and we get our UI updates uh, again without a lot of problems and crashes uh, like previously. Uh, now, view model. View model is uh, uh, as well a, a lifecycle where a component, but uh, it's um, 
you can hold your data, for example, if you are rotating your activity or making some other changes, uh, so it can survive all configuration changes. Uh, we can compare the life cycles of our, uh, for example, activity on the left and the view model on the right. It's uh, been created uh, with the activity and uh, it's been cleared only when the activity is finished. Uh, so it will not survive pressing back or killing the application, uh, but it will still be uh, there and hold uh, your, all your needed information that you need when you're rotating the screen or your activity, for example, comes to background for some time, but is not killed. So you have to remember to avoid references to views in view models. Uh, now let's look at the big picture. Uh, so we, we have uh, like our uh, yellow box with uh, live data. We have view model around it. Uh, it's uh, we can show something to the eye and uh, what's about the data that we are getting from uh, uh, from uh, to our application well uh, Google says that it's bad is best to use the repository to get send data and uh, it's a single point entry to all of your uh, data sources for example database and uh, if you and for database uh, the, we have uh, another library it's a uh, room it's object related uh, library object uh, and um, uh, for example uh, how, how, uh, it's um, for, uh, for example we have the table of users with the user ID and name and if you want to get this users from the database all we have to do is to create entity and uh, the da data access object class. And the entity class is quite simple. We just annotate it as entity with the name of our table. You mark our fields as columns and uh, mark our primary key if we need. And uh, now all, all we have to do is just uh, to create a user data access object to select these users, to get the list of these users, or to insert, all we have to do is just uh, annotate it with the right annotations. Or, uh, and, and the query is quite handful, but we all besides query, to get this uh, just users, the list of users, we have the observable query. It's um, uh, different from the simple, uh, the, the original query, that it, because uh, it returns a live data with uh, our user. So let's imagine we have uh, we get in user by ID, and for example, if we are using by ID four, we we get in our user John, and uh, for some reason we are getting uh, we we changed uh, our user to Mark, and uh, the live data uh, will automatically uh, change this user to Mark as well, and will notify the UI, and we will get our changes on the UI side and it's quite handful I think and uh, a little bit fun so let's summarize a little bit um, so you can update to the new Android Studio right now because it's already in release uh, I beg you to try uh, some architecture components because um, it's fun and say can clip your uh, clean your architecture a little bit and uh, interesting things that you can have uh, uh, you can use them all together or you can use uh, d them differently only room or for example only live data with the life cycle and if you want to uh, check or some kind of these things or learn use some small things from the Google try code labs they're really handful you, you if you have 30 40 minutes of free time they're great to check and learn new stuff. I have links to all these uh, things where you can download new Android Studio or get some information from GDD or Code Labs. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Oh, if you have a question. I have a question about that life cycle observer. Mm -hmm. 
could you please name some exact uh, cases when we can use it? Because uh, those on resume and on pause, we knew even before when they occur. So what is the purpose of uh, it? Yeah, it's quite uh, similar to the ones method that we have, but for, uh, with the life cycle, you can check um, more easily. You can check. Uh, if the activity is is shown or is not shown, uh, or you can change the state, you can create, I will move to the slide. Uh, for example, you can um, uh, check if the event was happening before. They have uh, more methods for this. So if, if it was started or not, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier, it's like, from three lines of code to one line of code, but mm -hmm. thank you. Как нам это выключить? 